Lesson number 100 of the 100 Jazz Series. Okay, I should have some balloons going or confetti or something, right? Um, there's much, much more to teach. And all these lessons have been quick lessons. It's my honor to, to tell what I know. If you want further lessons, come see me um, or join the site, like I've said before. I want to mention in this one, other violinists you should check out. It's not just about me, 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 me. You can check out my stuff too. I'll probably put in the links some thing, links to my, my stuff as well. So you can see that I'm not just a blabbering idiot and a talking head. Um, I can actually play as well. So, Stefan Grappelli. I highly recommend you check out Stefan Grappelli. He was like a rock star in Paris, him and Django Reinhardt in the 1930s and 40s. Um, and to this day, there is still Django festivals and there's a Django style hot club band, as they call it, in like every town. There's a hot club in here in Gainesville, Florida. There's a hot club de Ville. There's a hot club of Detroit. I've done shows with them. Hot Club of San Francisco, Hot Club of Nashville. Even Nashville has their own hot club band. Um, hot Club of Buffalo is up there. Some, some of the old members of Bob um, There's one in every town. There's festivals the world over for gypsy jazz. Check out Stefan Grappelli. He had a long career. He died in his 90s and was playing the whole time. Uh, a tireless improviser. Um, Joe Venuti, one of the founding fathers of the jazz world. Um, check out Joe Venuti. Um, I heard, a, uh, I played with a piano player who played with him. Um, his name is escaping me in Buffalo, uh, Al Tinney. And uh, I was honored to do a gig. Who had, He'd played with bebop guys in the early on times. He said he hated bebop. That's another story. Um, but he played a gig with Joe Venuti one time, and he said, and Joe would like to drink. This is the story. He said, and he had a Stradivarius, and he was a, the club was upstairs. They had to go up the stairs, and he tripped drunk, and he fell the whole way down the stairs, and the violin never hit the floor. It was like, <laughs> down each step, but the violin never touched the floor. <laughs> That's a cool little story. Um, so Joe Venuti, check him out. He was he was a great jazz violinist. Stuff Smith, not as well known. Um, some people say I play a little more like Stuff Smith. Um, I don't know about that. Uh, I picked it up through osmosis, maybe. But he did all the bebop stuff. Uh, an African-American violinist as well. Interesting in history. And he used the bow more like a drumstick. He was very at attacking and drumming-like, maybe. It's his African heritage. I'm not sure. Check out Stuff Smith. Uh, Jean-Luc Ponty, our patron saint of jazz fusion. I've got to meet Jean-Luc and been in touch with him a few times. I'm very honored. Um, he was with the Return to Forever 4 tour, and my old student was their road manager and got me in to meet Jean-Luc, and I got to sit in their rehearsals and stuff and got to meet those guys. Pretty cool. Jean-Luc is in the 70s, sold probably millions of records. You should check anything out by Jean-Luc Ponty. Um, um, Tracy Silverman, one of, I think is probably the world's greatest electric violinist right now, I think. He's one of them, at least. Um, once you get in a certain club, you, you know, everybody just mixes. But check out Tracy Silverman. He's on Wyndham Hill Records. He tours with uh, John Brickman, I think. He teaches at uh, Belmont University. Um, he is more classically influenced, but he also does more eclectic rock and roll stuff. He has a side band called Eclectica with uh, the drummer from Bela Fleck and himself, just violin, drums, and bass. Um, he's pretty cool. He plays a six string, has inspired me greatly. He's a good guy. Um, check out his stuff and his educational things. Mark Wood, not jazz. Uh, but I learned something from Mark. He's a heavy metal violinist. Um, he has a whole um, educational series that he does. Um, it goes to schools and does rock orchestras. I highly, I'm, I'm so glad Mark is in the world with us. Um, him and Tracy went to Juilliard School of Music together, I think. Mark uh, plays and has a company that makes Flying V electric seven string fretted violins. It's, it's definitely a rock and roll thing. Uh, he's wearing leather and has uh, studded arm bads, the whole heavy metal thing. He's a cool guy. Um, Check him out if you want to be inspired in the rock and roll sense, in the rule-breaking sense. Um, uh, let's see, Daryl Anger, of course. Daryl's maybe not as famous. He played with uh, Grisman and the Newgrass Ensemble, I think. He's played just like every style. He's got, um, he's, he has many, many video lessons. He's played on dozens and dozens of albums, uh, Grammy-nominated things. He's, he's a great guy and a great educator. Check out, he was, he's a founding uh, member of the Turtle Island String Quartet. Check out Daryl. Um, Eddie Jobson, not as well known, but pretty influential to me. He played with the band UK, is a marvelous keyboard player and a violinist, electric violin. He had a clear plexiglass violin, the lights would shine through. And if you're into the progressive fusion stuff, check out from the late 70s and early 80s, 
UK. This is his band, Eddie Jobson. Eddie also did a short stint in the band Yes. Um, and uh, let's see, Jerry Goodman played with Mahavishnu Orchestra. Check him out. Um, I don't know much about this band, but I keep hearing about them. Yellow Card had an electric violinist. It was a, it was a pop rock band. Um, of course, as far as pop rock bands go, the Dave Matthews Band is the most famous band on the planet that has a violinist in it. Check out uh, Boyd Tinsley in that, that group. Um, he's a cool-looking guy. Uh, Lindsey Sterling, of course, is breaking new ground. I'm so glad Lindsey is out there doing her thing. She became first known from one of those uh, TV contest shows where she did not win, but somebody saw her and said, oh, cute girl, bubbly, and she dances while she plays. Uh, let's put her on tour. They did all these great videos, and she tours the world. You might be a fan of hers. She is not a jammer, and she's not a jazz violinist, um, uh, but she puts on one hell of a show and is touring the world and, and does a great job and bringing new people to the alternative violin world, which is great. Amen for Lin Lindsay's. Um, Snarky Puppy um, is a very cool band. They don't always have a violinist, but they did have uh, uh, Zach Brock in there who does a great job. He's not super known, I think, except for in that, in that realm, but he does a great job. I have nothing but respect for, for Zach. Um, of course, there's my stuff with Gamelon. There's my stuff with Babik. Um, you can look up stuff with Lee Ron Zydeco. Some of the things I played, I did about four albums with the Cajun Zydeco group. Um, I did my Flavor album, which was Zydeco mixed with kind of jazz. All of Me, the tune we did here, I did a, a kind of a rock and roll version of it. Um, I did a record Conflation at one point. Um, you can find it on, on iTunes. C-O-N-F-L-A-T-I-O-N. It's kind of a hip-hop electronica thing with fiddle over the top so there's all these things you can check out um you can probably tell me about other players i've missed in this list but those are people i know of that have been have been inspiring to others and inspire me to keep going as well and at the top of their game check them all out um and let me know what you think about all this stuff and tell me i should probably talk less like my wife's saying less talking more playing i'll play with you i'll teach you and get you to play hit me up and we'll go forward together <laughs>